Hey guys, this is Bradley Bush. Here's another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about function compositions, which kind of sounds a little vague, but um, you may have heard of Fogg and Goff. It's kind of where you put one function as an input into another function. So before we start, let's talk about a brief reminder. Uh, domain, when we're finding domain of just a function in general, we start as a default with all real numbers. So we assume the domain of the function in question is all real numbers. And then we have to look for two specific areas that give us problems. The first area is we've got to kick out any number that will give us a zero in the denominator. That is no bueno. The second problem is we cannot have a negative under an even indexed radical, meaning the radical's right there. This happens to be a two, it's a square root. If it's a four, it's a fourth root. Whatever the case may be, we can't have a negative underneath there if we have an even number in our index. So we've got to kick out numbers that give us even numbers. So no negatives under square roots really is what it comes down to for most algebra, um, general algebra problems. So. With that in mind, let's move on to composite functions. So composite functions, there's some new terminology. Um, let's get that out of the way really quickly. So here we have something that looks like fog, but this is really red. Uh, you read this f of g of x. And uh, this is not multiplication, by the way. Not multiplication. So f of g of x, really all this is is a symbol that tells us that we are plugging g in as an input to f. So notice over here the g is closer to the x than the f is. And over here the g is still closer to the x than the f is. So their proximity doesn't change. I'm just rewriting it in a way that's more intelligible. So fog x really means I take G and I plug it in as an input to F. So let's compute this F of G using uh, our two sample functions, F and G above in red. So F of G really just means, uh, well, what is F? F again is X minus one. So we've got something minus one, and that something is going to be g because that's our that's our input. So that something then is going to be g, and g is x squared minus two x plus one. So again, this whole thing is g. And when we keep doing the algebra, we get x squared minus 2x, and the ones cancel. So we just, we just get x squared minus 2x. That's it. So that is f of g. Not too bad, right? How about we do it the other way around? How about we do g of f? So now we are plugging in f as an input into g. So well, uh, what is g then? g, we said, was over here, x squared minus 2x plus 1. So we have something squared. Again, this is f minus 2 something times something. Again, that's f minus 1. We continue down one more. 
line. Uh, let's actually put in F. So let's take F and plug it in for the symbol F. So we put X minus one in for F. What do we get? Well, we get something squared minus two times something minus one. Let's plug that F in. F is X minus one. X minus one. When we compute X minus one squared, this is a foiling problem, foiling problem. And this is just a distribution problem. X minus one times X minus one gives us X squared minus two X plus one. And if we want to do that uh, with more steps, we would say minus x minus x plus 1. And that gives us negative 2x plus 1. That's a little aside. I need a little bit more room down here. So here's a little aside. Now we know, because that is right here, um, when we plug in, well, let's just replace it. Let's do that. This gives us x squared minus 2x plus 1. Then we've got a minus. If we look back at this, 2 times x gives us 2x minus 2x, sorry. Negative 2 times negative 1 gives us positive 2, and then we have the negative 1 hanging out here. If we do a little bit of simplification, then we can see the 1's cancel, and that gives us what? x squared minus 4x plus 2. So that is g of f. We finished g of f. We took f and put in g, and that's what we got. That's the new function called g of f. So now we've done f of g, g of f. Um, how do we handle their domains? So the domain of a function composition is probably the thing that is the most difficult about function compositions. And let's see if we can kind of break it down with a little made up example that I have right here. So say f is x, the square root of x, and let's say g is x squared. So if we wanted to find f of g and evaluate it at x equals 2, well, what actually would happen? What happened, what would happen is right here. We would take the two, the x equals two, and we'd plug it into g. Well, what is two when we plug it in? What, 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 do, we, what do we get when we plug two in g? We get two squared, which equals four. That four then gets plugged back into f. And when we plug 4 into f, the square root of 4 is 2. So it kind of looks like this. We start with a value. We plug it into g as an input. It gives us an output, which is 4. And that 4 gets plugged into f as an input. And that gives us an output of 2. So. If we look at the inside function here, g, the output of g is actually the input of f. So when we're talking about domains, really the takeaway is we have to throw away any input from g that gives us an output that cannot go into f. Let me say that one more time because this line right here I think is what is the most confusing. Normally with domain, we say 
kick out problems that you can't put in because they give us issues. But now we've kind of got a function within a function, so we have to be a little bit more careful. So we can't, we have to throw away any input of G that produces an output that cannot go into F. All right, here's another example. So say our function f is x minus 1, and our function g is the square root of x. Say we want to find the domain of g of f. Well, if we find out what g of f actually is, uh, we take f and we plug it into g. Well, what is f? Uh, we can write this out right now. g is the square root of x. So we have the square root of x minus 1. This is g of f. So what's the domain of this? Well, we can't have any negatives underneath this radical because it's an even indexed radical. There's an implied 2 right there, square root. So how do we know what values, what outputs of f, meaning the x minus 1, will give us a negative number? We can find that by simply taking the function f, or in other words, x minus 1, and we say, where is it negative? And then we solve for x. So if we add 1 to both sides, then we end up getting x less than 1. So any value of x less than 1 will give us, when plugged into f, will give us an output that's negative and therefore can't go into g. So this is perfect. Now we can answer our question, which inputs for f give us negative outputs? Well, any x value that's less than 1 gives us negative outputs. Gives us negative outputs for the function f. So our domain then, we can just write down our answer now. So the domain of g of f would be 1 to infinity, including 1. That's it. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Uh, like the post, follow my page. Hope you have a great day.